welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today, we get to speak with Todd Baker. Way back in 2020, which does seem kind of like a lifetime ago, he was just a real estate agent. But when the pandemic hit, Todd found himself spending more time sitting around the house. One day, he got up from that couch, looked in the mirror, and he was 310 pounds and extremely unhealthy feeling. He did not like the way he looked. He didn't like the way he felt. He was overweight and wasn't exercising or eating right. His relationships were also suffering. He did not want just short-term change. He wanted to be a completely different person. So Todd set out to make long-lasting personal growth changes in his life. Welcome to the show, Todd. Thank you, Flavia. It's a pleasure to be here for sure. It's great to have you, although we kind of started with almost like a sad note. You know, I just, I pictured you (laughs) in front of the mirror. You're not feeling good about yourself. You, you know, you have... I work in real estate, so I know that that job is very public facing and very, um, it's customer service oriented. You're working with people. It's hard to sort of fake it if you're not feeling that confidence and that joie de vivre. And it seems like you really kind of hit a wall. So tell us a little bit about what that was like and how it was that you were able to break free from that. Yeah, no, it was, you know, just woke up that one January day and looked at the mirror and I was like, wow, this is because I played baseball in high school and in college and I was always active. And just as life went on, I kind of stopped being active and started eating bad and just decided at that point, like I need to, it started out as saying, I want to lose weight, but my resolution, like most people's uh, lasted a very short time frame. For me, it was three days. And then living in Denver, day four, it was snowing. And I was like, I'm not going today. But instead of just giving up or waiting till spring or next year, I I started to think about why it was important and who it was important to that I be active and that I participate in my own life. And that inspiration for me became my kids. They were, God, 14, 12, something like that at the time. And they're active. And I did not want to be the dad that sat on the sidelines, couldn't participate. They would want to go camping or fishing or hiking. And I would just send them off with someone else. Like I wanted to be the dad that they'd come home and say, we want to go hiking. And I would be like, great, let's get in the truck and go. And so it went from like losing weight to actually getting fit because that change in mindset, it it leads itself to more of a lifetime of fitness rather than a suit I need to fit in or a number I need to see on the scale. And that's, that's what I did. And I still do. And, you know, over the course of the year, I started feeling better, started looking better. I was able to participate in stuff with my kids and get out and go do stuff. And as a side benefit, my relationship with my kid improved dramatically because I told them why I was doing what I was doing. And not only was it important to me, but it became really important to them. And they would tell me all the time, like, dad, you got to go do this because we want you around for this, or we got a plan for this, or we're going to do that. And so it, it was just that shift from a short-term weight loss goal to a lifetime of just getting fit because you can maintain your fitness for life. Whereas if your goal is to lose 15 pounds, it's like, okay, you lost it. Well, what now? What's next? So that's, that's kind of what led me to the company and um, kind of what I coach on now. So tell us about the company because this was, this was just you working on yourself. But yeah. now that has led to a business. So what, what is that link and what is it that you do now? 
Yeah. So it's it, the, the, the amazing thing. And the, the thing that I realized is as I became more active and started walking every single day, it's like your brain turns on in all sorts of different ways. And I started thinking about, I can't be the only one that struggles with this. We all hear the statistics about New Year's resolutions, but I was like, I'm finding a different way to go about this. And I'm, I'm succeeding with how I'm approaching this. And other people can succeed this way too. And it was really just getting out and sharing that message of, I mean, mine was health, but it's, let's face it, everyone sets resolutions for basically one of three reasons, health, wealth, or relationships. And if you want more, there's different ways to approach it. And I just wanted to get out and, and share the message with as many people as possible to, to get people to start to grab onto the steering wheel of their own life and realize that there is a different and a, an alternative way to get where you want to go that's not, oh, just write down your goal and write down the steps and start doing it. There's different approaches that you need to have that has a lot to do with mindset and a lot to do with just that loving and caring for yourself first before you can really start to give anything else to anyone else. Do you think that health, right, which would be sort of nutrition, exercise, there's a mental component to, why is that so challenging for so many people? I mean, that's sort of a, maybe a philosophical question, but it just feels like when you said, when people make resolutions, I mean, it is common, like almost everyone making a resolution was going to be addressing health in some way. Oh, I want to eat better. I want to drink less alcohol or I want to do more exercise or be more flexible or, you know, all the things. And, but it just seems it's so hard. What is that mental block? Why isn't it just easy? It's easy to like binge watch Netflix, but it's somehow it's not easy to have an exercise habit. Why? Well, I think it's exactly what you said because everything else is easy. And it's easy to stop at fast food on the way home because you don't have to think about it or to not go for a walk or get a morning workout in because you think you, you know, you tell yourself, I need this extra 15 minutes of sleep or whatever it is. And exercise above all of the others requires the most physical effort to actually do something about it's and you don't have to do a lot i mean if it's going for a walk you still got to go and go for a walk if it's working out at home you still have to get up get out of bed and do some um changes in diet it becomes i think part of it is ease and part of it is a coping mechanism it's for me like i i quit drinking like three years ago just and it wasn't for any other reason than just health. And I enjoyed my life too much to go out on a Friday night and be in a fog at all. Like I had stuff to do. But for a lot of people, unfortunately, they end their weeks on Friday nights and they escape into a bar or to hanging out with friends and drinking as an escape from the stress and the reality of whatever they're doing on a daily basis. And Because so many people do it, it's easier to fall into that than it is to stand alone and be like, hey, look, I'm a great date because I don't drink and I'm a guaranteed designated driver home. But that's that's the that's the more challenging part of it is to do something that's different than what society considers the norm. Well, it's that norm that's so dangerous, right? Because for a lot of people, they think, well, if I'm not exercising and eating well, I'm just kind of at neutral. Like I'm just sort of like, eh, not doing great, but you know, oh, well, I just don't look the way I want to look in a bathing suit, but no big deal. And I can get around to that. But if you look at it with a different mindset, like if I said to someone, hey, would you drink a little bit of antifreeze in your coffee every morning? The person would be like, no, that's poison. That w- that's ridiculous. I would, I would be killing myself if I were to poison myself on a daily basis. But a lot of people who don't pay attention really to their nutrition and they're not exercising at all or as much as they should be or can, 
it really is. It's not a neutral. I mean, it's a negative. Like you can die earlier, right? And have all kinds of health problems and quality of life issues fairly quickly. I mean, these things hit you as we all get older. And I'm in that stage where, you know, you see the years keep going by and your body is not as resilient. Like you're not able to sort of uh, abuse your body in the same way that maybe you could when you were 25 and, you know, could stay up all night and not sleep well and and do fine and not drink enough water. And oh, well, your body just kind of blew it all off. Uh, But it's, it's, it's a real danger. So what you're doing is could even be saving lives. I know I, we can always put it kind of dramatically, but you might very well be, if not saving lives, extending their life and the quality of life. So tell us about Project 9. What is that about? Yeah, so the <laughs> the funny thing is that the, the name Project 9, it's actually the brainchild of my kids. So my son plays baseball. He's a freshman in college. My daughter played softball. And when we were, when I was talking about the business and kind of coming up with ideas, both of them said, well, do it after like the sports that we play, because in baseball and in softball, when you're on defense, there's nine players on the field. And the logo that we came up with, has got the diamond that's kind of offset, which represents the bases. And I was like, all right, well, you know, we kind of threw around some ideas and out it came. But the company is really based on helping people do what inspires them. You know, you have to have, you have to want something different. Um, like you're talking about the the neutral or I'm not doing great, but I'm not doing bad. I'm just kind of existing. I mean, history has taught us if you're if you're in neutral, you're actually going backwards because everyone else is going to start moving forwards. And you know, start achieving more and stuff like that. But the company is just, it's based on a coaching program that is very simple. It's intentionally simple. So it's not 99 points to be a better realtor, which people get through like six and they're like, I'm not going to remember any of this. It's very simple because once you start on it, the path is not easy. It's going to require maybe not physical effort, but it's going to take your emotions and thoughts and doing things that maybe you haven't done before and stuff like that. But the path, the process and the plan is very simple. There's minimal things that you kind of got to pay attention to. And most importantly is figuring out your why. Like, what is that core thing that inspires you that you can't fail on? You know, motivation can be fleeting. You know, everyone gets the motivation per day in a calendar or Facebook or social media or something like that. But that can change. And sometimes you wake up and you look at it and it's like, that doesn't do anything for me. But your inspiration, that fire inside of you that you're not going to fail on. And it could be kids, family, friends, status or whatever, whatever that thing in you that makes you want more and do more that you can't fail on but it takes some work to discover exactly what that is so it's like every fifth grade elementary school teacher taught all of us you gotta ask why seven times before you get the right answer and it's the same thing here you gotta just keep digging in until you get to that point and then you ask one more time like why is this important or who is this important to And once you discover it, then you get some clarity on where you ultimately want to go. And clarity is huge. You know, it's the the world and society is trying to cloud everything in terms of your vision and your path and your direction and your goals and aspirations. And you have to you have to maintain the clarity as to where you're ultimately going for the rest of your life. What are some examples of students who have gone through your program and have achieved something that is unique? I mean, there's so many, everyone's unique, right? All the stories are unique, but sometimes there's a couple of standouts where you're like, you know what? That's one that always comes to mind. Share those with us because it's always nice to hear what other people have struggled with and how they've overcome. And it can be very inspiring. Yeah. So the, I had a student that was, she was going through the program a month and a half ago or something. And her name's Lisa. And she was just, she was like, she was very similar to me. She's like, I just, I got to get fit. I've got 
she had two young daughters and they were growing and she was seeing herself degrading as they were becoming more active. And so she put together her plan for just something simple. Like she was just going to, she committed to walking every single day. And it was about five weeks into what for us is an eight week program, but about five weeks in week four, she was on the group zoom chat and she was there. She was attentive, but she was like most people. She's just sitting there taking stuff in, taking notes, sharing when she has something to share. And then the next week she showed up and all of a sudden, like you could tell, like something had changed for her because she went from sitting back in her chair to sitting up and she was louder and more animated and she was like full of just energy and confidence. And I asked her, I said, what happened? Like what changed for you? And she goes, she's like, it happened. And it's something I talk about. She's like, it happened last week where me walking and getting fit, it, it's not what I do anymore. It's who I am. And when she and when anyone makes that transition and you change from something you're doing or working on to actually who you are and you embody it, like her light just went on and she starts asking like about what's next and what can I do after this? Because not only had she done and made progress with what she was currently doing, but she was going to continue doing it. Like she didn't see getting fit as her, her leveled up, like that was it. And now it's off of that and onto the next, she was going to continue doing that and start taking on something else because everything to her became an opportunity at that point, not an obstacle. So, and there's, I've got, there's a bunch of people that they have that. And you can always tell as an individual, when you make that transition and it's when people stop asking you what you're doing. It doesn't matter if it's health, wealth, relationships, but at the beginning, it'll be like, hey, you look like you're working out, you're losing weight, what are you doing? You're attracting more people, you're making more money, like, what are you doing? Or I see you, you and your spouse out all the time, you guys, what plan are you following? What's the goal here? Stuff like that. They'll ask those questions. And then the more you do it, about four or five, six weeks in, people stop asking. Because they don't see it as something you're doing anymore. You're just showing up and this is your new you. It's your it, it's the new, better version of what you were. And most people at that point, they adopt the stand the stance of, hey, you think I've accomplished a lot now? You just wait and see what I actually get to because they just want so much more. And they're driving the car of their life and they're those dreams that they had that they thought were dimming are now shining brighter than ever. And for anyone who's out there who, like you, wants to be a coach, a mentor, a teacher, what are some of the challenges of making this your business? You know, this is, this is not just a mission. This is a business. It's, it's you, how you make your living. What right. are some of those challenges in the world of coaching? And uh, do you have any stories to share from that journey? Yeah, I mean, anyone that gets into anything publicly facing or especially coaching where you're going to be helping other people with whatever they're dealing with, whatever your specialty is, the first thing is you're going to think is you're going to get a case of imposter syndrome. You know, you're going to think, well, why are people going to listen to me? Why, what makes me different than X, Y, and Z? And you just have to have the belief that your story and the what you're teaching on, other people are going through it and struggling with it. And if you've had success, people want to know that, like how you did it. And then obviously there's the just the mechanics, like how are you going to structure it? How are you going to go about getting your name out there? You know, what levers are you going to pull in terms of social media or podcasting or speaking or seminars? And there's all sorts of different stuff that you can pull. But the biggest thing that I learned through it is you don't have to be an expert in all of it. I think Russell Brunson was the best example I can give of he employs what he calls a just-in-time learning, meaning he just keeps going with his business 
And he doesn't learn anything outside of his business until his business needs it. And then he learns it. And utilize the talents and the people around you. Get into groups on social media that have experts and just utilize those assets that are there. People that know about social media, people that know about system building and stuff like that. Like you don't have to be an expert because you need to focus on what you are good at, which is sharing your story and inspiring others. And you just know that there's going to be ups and downs and it's going to be tough at the beginning. You don't just walk into 10,000 clients and be like, hey, I'm good. You got to work to get there. And it is work. Even though you're an entrepreneur and you're self-employed and a lot of people think, well, I'll get into this and I'll have freedom of time and freedom of schedule. And I'll be the first to tell you, no, you don't. It took me becoming an entrepreneur to actually get a hold of my schedule. I, and I've become more disciplined with my schedule and where my time is allocated now that I do work for myself than I ever did before. So, but utilize everyone that's out there. Um, there's, there's plenty of experts that are there and willing to help. And, you you know, yeah, you might spend a little bit of money, but getting the right people in the right places are going to accelerate those back office and those things that you're not an expert in, which allows you to be an expert where you are. Excellent advice, Todd. How does someone connect with you if they want to follow your journey, what you're working on, or learn more about Project Nine Life? Yeah, the easiest way is just email us. It's info at projectninelife.com. Or you can go to the website and just click on contact us and that'll send it off immediately. And you can just put in the subject heading like more information. I heard you on Flavia's show and I'd be interested in learning more. And we'll schedule a discovery call. It's a half hour. It's on Zoom. And the whole purpose there, it's complimentary. And just want to know like where what you're dealing with, where you want to go and how we can help get you. The most it's going to cost you is a half hour of time of really kind of figuring out what, like, how we can help and if we can help. Because I'll be the first person to tell you, like, if what you're going through or dealing with or where you want to go, if it's not an area of expertise for me, I'm not just going to put you into a program just to put you into a program. I've got plenty of resources available to where. I can refer you to other coaches who might speak more your language. Perfect example, and you know, be it what it is, but if you're a female and you're approaching that day and age in your life cycle where the big M is coming and you're not feeling beautiful or not feeling desired or struggling with some stuff, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not the coach for you because I have never been there. But I know people that that's exactly where they specialize. So, you know, but it's the easiest way is just to email us or contact us through the website. And uh, we're here to help. Project Nine Life, the number nine, projectninelife.com. Todd, it's been so great having you on. It's inspirational. It's very motivating too. I'm like, yeah, I should probably go take a walk right now. But uh <laughs> So I I love this conversation and where it went. Again, thank you so much for sharing your message with our audience. Yeah, thank you for having me, Flavia. It's been, uh, been an absolute pleasure. So thank you for the opportunity. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. 
Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.